Ladies and gentlemen, this is the YouTube channel vlog show of inspiration and realness. Also, this is the YouTube channel vlog show of positivity, personality, and fun. This is Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977, and now the perpetrator of these shenanigans, Big Beefy E himself from his Big Beefy Man Cave in New Bedford, Massachusetts, Mr. Shenanigans himself, and the two-time Chilling 3000 2022 End of the Year Awards winner, Eric M. Lima. Thank you very much, Mr. Announcer, sir. Well, hello there, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. Just got watched, done watching Press Your Luck. Heck of a show. Um, the first, um, heck, heck of a show, and I think we have a first time ever a clean bonus round. You'll, I'll explain. If I, I apologize for anybody who's got some spoilers. Um, AEW Dynamite was pretty um, pretty in, insane. Uh, the Ring of Honor World and MJ put uh, PW Strong Openweight titles on the line in the buy-in, which is the first time ever for a show. And uh, Eddie Kingston defending it against Minoru Suzuki. And this was a heck of a matchup between these two guys. And Kingston did win and retain the title. And then uh, for a, a great sportsmanship, they slapped each other's chest and they gave each other a hug and respect. And, and you know, but Team Jarrett was looking on. And it seems like um, Team... Jay Lethal wants, probably wants to be Ring of Honor champion. Christian Cage cut a promo on Brian Danielson and Swerve Strickland to kick it off. And then the number one uh, TNT contender for the TNT title, the winner of the match, will face Christian Cage at Collision. Brian Danielson versus Swerve Strickland and Brian Danielson in the winning um, in the w in the ring after Adam Page gets involved distracting Swerve Strickland. Meanwhile, Samoa Joe cut a promo. About being the Ring of Honor, um, being a world champion, AEW world champion, held by MJF. But MJF's got a lot of problems on his own. Powerhouse Hobbs, who happens to be the newest member of the Don Callis family, went one on one with Chris Jericho. Hobbs won the matchup, though, and then started attacking, continued to attack Jericho um, after the match, which he was taken out and he was taken to, to a lo local medical facility. Um, taken to the hospital to make sure it's okay. But Adam Cole, once again, and Roderick Strong, and uh, Roderick Strong wants him to do more chores. The guy needs surgery. Roderick Strong's an idiot sometimes, you know. I'll tell you one thing right now, you know. If, if I want to work with somebody, uh, if, if they know that I'm injured, no working. No working. So, and, uh, so the international title was on the line. Uh, Ray Phoenix was supposed to defend against John Moxley, but Tony Khan said, uh, but Tony Khan said um, he's unable to compete. But then and then Hook comes up and and John Cassidy goes, "How about Orange Cassidy, man? You never got his rematch." I mean, if, and then Tony comes like, "You want it?" He goes, "Yeah, yeah, whatever, sure. Okay, I'll I'll take it. I'll take the match. Okay." And by the way, happy birthday! And then Hook offers Tony Khan a chip. Hilarious, hilarious. You start like that. So Ray Phoenix defended against Orange Cassidy, and. Orange Cassidy ended up winning the matchup. And then Ray Phoenix uh, was getting checked on by Alex Hernandez and Penta El Zero Miedo. And Penta was looking at Orange Cassidy. He gets out of the ring as best friends. And Hook and Rocky Romero did congratulate uh, Orange Cassidy. Fist bumps all around. So super cool to see that. And... RJ City interviewed the lovely, the gorgeous, the bay malicious, curvaceous, the timeless Tony Storm. And they had uh, a little silent film. When going back to the 1900s, it was Lover's Lament Part 1 with ti uh, timeless Tony Storm. And Tony Storm, like, pantomiming and everything. Like, it's, he's in a silent film. It's, whole, it's hilarious, but at the same time, it's so super cool. And she's funny. She's all funny, and, she, and she's hilarious, right? And so... And so that was just part one. But then uh, Wardlow took on Matt Seidel and Wardlow beat him. Beat Matt Seidel. No problem at all. Then um, uh, and then uh, Rene Paquette was trying to be, interview Chris Jericho, check him on and see how he's doing. But then did get Daniel Garcia want to check him on and Matt Menard says, is it worth it to you? And I think Daniel Garcia... Probably, you know, is worried about Jericho and probably a lot of respect for him. Who, who knows? Who knows what's going on? And Adam Page 
went up against Jay White. And um, and then during the matchup, though, Prince Nana and Swerve Strickland got involved. And Jay White did pick up the victory. But MJF comes out and addresses Bullet Club Go. He wants his belt back. And then and then Juice Robinson says some derogatory things. And has like a roll of quarters that has Freeman's name on it. Freeman was ticked off. Was not very happy. So... Then there's Lover's Lament Part 2 with Timeless Tony Storm. Can I say something about Timeless Tony Storm? I have to say, I've said this many times before, but Tony Storm, she took a character and took it up a notch. And she, oh my, when she did that little seduction thing, you know, the seducing dance, I'm like, hello, hello, gorgeous, you know, and she is just, mm. I don't know what it is. Juice Robinson, man, you lucky man, you. Let me tell you. <whistles> Lord, you talking about the legs, the thighs. I'm like, good Lord, a woman's got curves. You got. I love Tony Storm. I just love timeless Tony Storm. Hilarious, that woman. That woman is hilarious. Speaking of the, uh, Tony Storm, a little bit more on her because the women's title was on the line. Soraya versus Hikaru Shida. And, uh, and then a mask, uh, a mask person, a mask woman was trying to spray Sheeta, and then I think Sheeta knew who it was. It was Ruby Soho. Ruby Soho's hi hi, and then Sheeta turned to spray on uh, Ruby Soho. Ruby Soho was backing up, and then uh, Sheeta was looking around, and she's like, "What?" And then she saw Tony Storm run by, timeless Tony Storm, attacking Ruby Soho with her shoe. And it was funny, and it was attacking, and then she attacking her shoe, throwing her shoes, and attacking Ruby Soho, chasing Ruby Soho out. And, but these two women f fought it out, and uh, and Sheeta is once again the champion. She's the first three-time AEW Women's World Champion. I'm telling you right now, if, if this title goes back to t Timeless Tony Storm, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Let me tell you, but but Sheeta, congratulations, three-time champion. Uh, Don Callis and Kanosuke Takeshita described a car promo on Jericho as they go in picture in picture. And Takeshita, um basically uh, decided to do what Sammy Guevara did. You know, do the sign thing. So it was hilarious. Rene Paquette interviewed MJF. And MJF was like, I don't know what to do. I need some backup. I'm going to call Adam Cole, see what's up. He called, finally got a hold of Adam Cole. And Adam Cole's like, oh, I'm still at Roddy's house. And he's like, hey, listen, we're breaking up. Can I hear you? I can't hear you and all. Um, I'm going to have to call you back, man, you know. So MJF was not, but... Then Platinum Max Caster came up, who's been stalking MJF. I said, hey, if you want some backup, we'll be your backup. And then, and then Billy Gunn was going, uh, who you're talking to us about, you know, being a, his backup? And what is your fascination with that Yahoo? And Anthony Bowens was like, I don't know. It's like an nasty. And then, and then Platinum Max Caster explained that they were friends, you know, create a pro and all that. And so we had a little history. So, so I wanted to help him out. So I'm like, oh, well, I don't know. So, Christian Cage addresses the, uh, the Kansas City crowd, um, dissing Adam Copeland. And, uh, he charged the ring, but then he held, and then Wayne jumped out and held his leg. Luchasaurus clothesline Copeland with that, you know, the extinction clothesline. The two went at it, though, uh, in a matchup. This was a heck of a matchup until, uh, again, uh, both Nick Wayne and Chris Cage, uh, Christian Cage get, but it backfired, and... And then Col Adam Copeland ended up hitting uh, Luchasaurus with a spear. He wins the matchup. But then uh, Nick Wayne and uh, Luchasaurus attacking Copeland after the matchup. The Black Bull, uh, Brian Danielson got involved. and wanted to go after Christian Cage. Black Bull Combat Club got involved. Mogul Embassy got involved. Darby Allen gets involved. And the rest of the Black Bull Combat Club got, got involved. Uh, Claudio Castagnoli and Luda. And then at the end you see Brian Danielson making Christian Cage tap out to the LaBelle lock. And that, and that will be the collision match for Saturday. So that is all the time we have on this show. I want to thank everybody, um, thank you all for watching. AEW Dynamite Title Tuesday. That means, that means there's no AEW tomorrow So because of the baseball playoffs. And that, and speaking of baseball, the Texas Rangers swept the Baltimore Orioles. The Orioles who had the best record, one of the best records, in the, probably the best record in the American League. They got swept by Texas. Who knew, right? And Nathan, I, Nathan Evaldi, I think, came back in time. Wow. So, 
They'll face the winner, I think, believe in the Astros and Twins, I think, in, in the ALCS. Whoever wins that faces Texas. So the Rangers are going to ALCS. That's crazy. So, And pressure luck is over. Like I said, um, it, was a, it was a great, great deal. So that's all the time we have on this show. I'll see you in the next episode of Eric Lee Machine Against 1977. Until that next episode comes around, Mr. Announcer, take us home. That is all for today's episode of the show. This is Mr. Lima speaking for Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. A big beefy E, do it for Bob Saget production. And in association with a sweet both of raving dingleberries, telepictures, and distribution. Thank you for watching another great episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. Until the next episode, goodbye for now.